right, Groves, well, welcome back for round two. I hope you've had a great week, and I hope uh, so far tonight or whenever you guys meet that you've had a good meeting so far. Again, you're making connections, growing together, kind of digging those roots into each other so that we can help support each other and help help each other stand. Um, and so tonight, I kind of want to unpack a little bit of the passage that we mentioned on Sunday morning, if you were there, and it's probably really one of the most famous lines, really, out of all of Ecclesiastes. There's a song about it from the 60s, I think, The Birds, and this, I've heard some remakes of it. Uh, and it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Again, we talked about it on Sunday morning, but I, I kind of wanted to unpack it a little bit more because I can't, didn't really feel like I could really do it all on Sunday morning and really wanted to just focus the beginning line and really want you guys to unpack the rest of it uh, in your groves and kind of really, almost maybe even line by line, kind of go through it and be like, <coughs> excuse me, what does this mean? And, and how do we apply this wisdom that Solomon is trying to share with us, again, living life in reverse as he's reached the end and he's looking back, how can we take that wisdom and apply it to our lives today? And so I want to read it and then we're going to kind of just give you a few thoughts and then we're going to kind of just toss it to you guys to discuss. So <coughs> it says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak up. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And then he kind of goes in this next line. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts and the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Uh, and then you guys can read the next part here, but I just want to kind of talk a little bit about this because I think it's just a really profound passage. And I think it's one that today in our culture, in our time, we kind of, it doesn't really sit well with us because we kind of feel like there's one side of this list that is what life should be. And there's one side of the life of life that you kind of say, eh, that's kind of pushes to the side. Uh, and I don't think we should have to deal with these kinds of things. But Solomon in his wisdom is saying, look, people, life can be kind of a hot mess. And life is ups and downs, and life is turns and roller coaster ride and lefts and rights, and, and it's just, it's kind of convoluted. It's never going to just be one thing. It's going to be all these things, and they're going to be all meshed together, and sometimes you're going to go in and out of these things, maybe side by side or in the same moment where you could be experiencing both of these things. And so you kind of need to have this approach in life where don't expect life to be so defined or so controlled, we kind of talked about this a couple of weeks ago, how we like to, the whole John Hammond Jurassic Park, like you don't have control, like that's the illusion. You can't control everything. And I think this is kind of a reminder that, hey, life is going to be a little bit messy. And so just accept that, embrace that, because there is going to be times in your life and there's time for, for everything. There's an appointed time. That's kind of the word he uses here for everything. So there's going to be times in your life where, yes, mourn. But there's also going to be times in your life where you're, you're dancing and celebrating. I remember being you know, at certain times where I might go from a funeral or memorial service and go to a wedding like the next day or the next weekend. And it's like this juxtaposition where you're mourning the loss, but then you have to shift gears and suddenly you're celebrating this new life. Or maybe you have a death and a birth right next to each other <coughs> in your family. And so there's going to be mourning, but there's going to be dancing. There's going to be times to tear and there's going to be times to mend. There's going to be times to give up and there's going to be times to persevere. It's just going to be this convoluted hot mess. It kind of reminds me of, <coughs> maybe you're going to get confused here, but Kenny Rogers, okay? Kenny Rogers, you got to love Kenny Rogers. Not so much Kenny Rogers Roasters, maybe, but Kenny Rogers, the singer, uh, and his most famous song of all time, I think the best song ever is what? What do you think? It's The Gambler, right? And the whole, the whole line, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time. Yeah, you, you, know, you know the bit, right? So you know the song. 
And it's kind of this idea in the song of like, hey, there's gonna be a time for this and a time for that. Like you gotta have a time when you know when to just like, nope, this is not a good hand and just toss it aside or know when to keep them and to keep going. It kind of reminds me even of your, if you're, if you're married and you got married uh, at your wedding, you made these vows and you, you declared your intentions. And one of the things that almost everybody says is they say this idea of for richer or poorer, right? Uh, in sickness and in health. Can you imagine getting up to your vows and being like, only, only in, in, in richer. If we go down the poor route, like, I'm out of here, right? Or I'm going to be here with you when you're healthy, but when you're sick, like, peace out, I'm out of here, right? No, it's like you're going to have all these things in your marriage, and that's why you acknowledge that in your, your wedding ceremony. And I kind of think maybe we need to do the same thing when it comes to our relationship with God. It's like, okay, when I, when I, when I embraced you, God, when I embraced you, Jesus, it's like I embrace that life can be messy, and it's not just going to be rainbows and unicorns for the rest of my life. Uh, when Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, hey, I came to give you life and to give you abundant life. Uh, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you great life. He didn't mean there's only going to be a time to be born and there's never going to be a time to die. He wasn't making us a promise that, hey, there's only going to be times to plant. There's never going to be times to uproot. Hey, there's only going to be times to heal and there's never going to be times where you need to kill. Hey, you're only going to be building up, but you're never going to have to tear down. You're, never, you're always going to laugh, and you're never going to have to mourn. He never made that kind of promise, and I think some of us have this idea that that's what we expect once we become believers, is that we expect that our life is just supposed to be smooth, and so when things get a little chaotic, we get confused. And so I just want you to unpack this passage because he says some pretty profound stuff. It's like, hey, there's a time in your life to be born, and guess what? Like we talked about on Sunday, there's a time to die. You're not going to live forever. Hey, guess what? There is a time for you to plant. There's also times to kind of uproot. There's going to be those times in your life where it's, you, it's, you, both of those are going to be appropriate. Uh, there's going to be a time to weep. There's going to be a time to mourn. But there's also going to be times to dance. There's going to be times to laugh, right? I think we just need to embrace this idea that life is not supposed to be just one thing or the other. It's going to be all over the place. And the thing is that God walks with us through it. So as you unpack this passage in your grove, I just want you guys to really have a time to discuss it. And to kind of unpack it and, and kind of iron sharpening iron, kind of like bringing out different ideas or different thoughts on how to, to interpret this. Uh, but really, it's kind of a beautiful, it's a really a beautiful passage. Um, and I think that's probably why it's been written in songs uh, is because of this idea of this is what life is. This is what life is, people. Life is messy. Uh, and so don't expect it just to be one thing or the other thing. Get, embrace this idea that you're going to have all that. You're going to have times where you're sick. You're going to have times when you're healthy. You're going to have times where your spouse is sick and you have to support them. You have times when you're the one that's, it's like, you're just going to have these moments because that's what life is. Uh, so hopefully I gave you some food for thought as you kick things off. I hope you guys have a great discussion. Uh, I will just throw this out there for you. I'd really appreciate it if you'd be praying. Uh, on Thursday, we have 30 men from Rising that are headed up to Utah for uh, a, a kind of a leadership retreat and kind of really talking about what it means to be a man and how to lead. Um, and so just be praying for the men that are going. We leave Thursday. We come back next Monday. Um, so please just be pray for them. Uh, maybe do that as your grove. You guys could wrap up tonight just praying for some of the men that are going. Um, and we will check in with you again next week. We'll see you.